Tonight on KGW News, a close call for a Portland driver as a tree flattens their windshield. And they're not the only ones nearly taken out this week. We've got a big gravity storm going on right now with trees and branches dumping. Plus, the threats that forced some Oregon schools to evacuate also went to houses of worship and airport. Tonight, the FBI has a lead on who sent them. Then later. Water was running right through my tent. I would have nothing again. Homeless campers in Seaside displaced by the rain, but the city's effort to get them to dry ground. When are we going to stop just throwing something at it and start looking for the right fix? Is causing some businesses to suffer. Thanks for joining us tonight at 11. I'm China Green. First tonight, for many, the holidays and alcohol use, it goes hand in hand. But Oregon health officials are trying to change that narrative. They say excessive alcohol use is on the rise and one of the leading causes of preventable death and disease. Catherine Cook talked with someone who survived alcohol addiction and is now helping others do the same. Catherine. In his experience, alcohol doesn't discriminate. It doesn't care how much money you have or where you're from. And for people struggling with alcoholism, the holidays can make that fight even harder. He wants people to know there's help and hope. Don't get it twisted, like alcohol is, is probably one of the most deadliest drugs out there. Daniel Gamboa knows that firsthand. His path to sobriety started several years ago with help from City Team Ministries. I know these meetings saved my life. I would be dead right now if it, um, if it wasn't for the 12 step program of Alcoholics Anonymous. Now he's helping others find that same freedom as city team program manager in Southeast Portland. Not everyone who drinks alcohol is an alcoholic, right? Um, but for those of us that are, it is, it is a fatal disease. Data from state health officials supports that. The Oregon Health Authority says heavy drinking among adults is rising and the cause of one in five deaths of Oregonians 20 to 49 years old. The state also points to excessive alcohol use as the third leading cause of preventable death and disease in Oregon. It hits me really hard because I've known so many people who have died from this disease. And um, the reality is, is I will know more and I will know more next year. This month, the Oregon Health Authority relaunched its Rethink the Drink campaign. It aims to encourage conversations about alcohol, decrease excessive drinking and provide support during the holidays a time when Gamboa notes social pressures are especially high. It's almost expected that we that we drink. Gamboa urges people to challenge that social construct and to stand with those fighting addiction. For those afraid of beginning that fight, he offers this. The reality is, is um, there are a lot of people out there that, that are going through the exact same thing. When we go to these meetings, you know, it's, it's so good because there is no judgment. For those ready to seek help, there are a lot of options, including Alcoholics Anonymous. Some AA meetings are even virtual. We'll post resources and links on KGW.com. Back to you. Catherine, thank you. All right, take a look at this. It was a close call for a person visiting a patient at OHSU. A large tree branch crashed right on top of the car, as you see here. So this happened around 1130 Monday morning as the driver was headed to Dornbecker Children's Hospital in southwest Portland. Portland Fire said a branch from a 100 year old tree fell right on top of that car. Now, incredibly, the driver was not hurt and was able to slide out of their seat and get out through the back of the car. Portland Fire and Rescue is warning people to be aware of your surroundings. You know, lots of branches or trees falling. So if, you, if you're out and about, be, be aware of that. Uh, if you have a tree, that maybe it's in your own property that could use some attention. It might be a good time to contact a professional to make sure that, you know, you don't have a tree fall down on your home or in your neighbor's home. Another person was hit by a 20 foot branch in downtown Portland today. They had a minor injury, but is expected to be OK. Let's get you caught up on other headlines tonight. A fire broke out in a Multnomah County maintenance building this evening. It started around six on Southeast Water Avenue. Portland Fire say crews stationed just 200 yards away heard an explosion when this happened. The official cause is still under investigation, but it is believed to have started when equipment on a water tanker malfunctioned. Crews had the fire under control within 20 minutes. No one was hurt.
A Westland man has pleaded guilty for conspiring to import and sell counterfeit N95 masks during the pandemic. According to court documents, 70 year old Zhang Yu used social media and other means to market and sell $2.5 million worth of masks. He faces a maximum sentence of 10 years in federal prison and will be sentenced in May. And the chief of staff for Portland Public Schools is leaving his job the same day as Superintendent Guadalupe Guerrero. In fact, Jonathan Garcia announced on Twitter today his last day will be February 16th. Garcia has been working for PPS since 2017. He says he's proud of the work that he's done over the years for students of color and their families. And then speaking of Guerrero, the superintendent addressed his resignation at a board meeting tonight. Guerrero says that he felt it was the right time to pass the baton. He thanks students, teachers and district leaders for their hard work and passion. I'm so grateful for this incredible privilege and opportunity uh, to serve as your superintendent for the last six and a half years. The school board will meet later this week to name an interim leader. His last day will be February 16th. Now to the latest information about the bomb threats sent all over the state on Monday. The FBI says that just within Oregon, they've counted more than 18 incidents impacting a dozen school districts, three synagogues and two small regional airports. Alma McCarthy has those details. On Monday morning, a dozen school districts across Oregon received threatening emails alluding to bombs or explosives hidden somewhere on campus. Over in eastern Oregon, those emails arrived in Gillum County around 10 o'clock to the Arlington and Condon school districts. That triggered a chain of events that ultimately landed law enforcement uh, into into the scope of things. We evacuated the school, uh, did a, a full search of the school, evaluated what we were looking at, and ultimately determined that it was a hoax threat. Lieutenant Tori Flory no explains threat. their agency is small, consisting of eight full-time sworn officers, including the sheriff and himself. So they leaned on partnering agencies nearby to help. You know, if it wasn't for the assistance and, and the help that we were able to get from our, our partnering agencies, our neighboring counties, uh, that would run us really thin in, in an event like this. The depletion and distraction of, of law enforcement and public safety resources is very, very impactful. FBI Special Agent in Charge least, for the state of Oregon, Kieran Ramsey, the, the says they're investigating the these and several other hoax threats, which also impacted three synagogues and two small regional airports. Most, if not all, talked about some kind of bombing or potential bombing. Uh, we do have a number of threats that used very similar, if not the exact same verbiage. And then in some instances, we've thus far been able to trace back one IP, which is located outside the United States. Ramsey so says they're still piecing together the full picture to determine if all of the threats are connected and who is behind them. Especially when we talk about the school context. Unfortunately, we have seen tragedy after tragedy across the entire United States, to include here historically in Oregon, where we are not able at all to simply dismiss a threat out of hand as a nuisance in that school setting. We just can't. Ramsey said PDX was not threatened, but he could not reveal which airports received the hoax threats. We've learned locally congregations Neva Shalom and Beth Israel were recipients and that Portland police swept the buildings and did not find any immediate threat. In the newsroom, Alma McCarty, KGW News. You're watching KGW News at 11. Still ahead, it's a coastal homeless camp washed out by last week's flooding. But the city's plan to move them to higher ground is being met with backlash. Plus, there's a new addition to downtown Portland. Meet the robot beefing up security in the area. And what a day around the northwest. We had sunshine. East winds were super strong. You can see them as the clouds move from east to west in the passes south of Mountain Hood. There. Coming up, a few sprinkles, yeah, maybe a few this week. More east wind, and then finally, a look at some mountain snow potentially for next week.